As I mentioned in my previous video, I will now be going over the indictment with Safe Moon. This is in regards to John Caroni, Kyle Nagy, and Thomas Smith. If you want to keep up to date with this information, don't forget to hit subscribe, hit the bell notification, and I also have my own Telegram group. You can find a link down in the description below where you can engage with other people in the community as well as see the videos when I post them. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive right on into the news. Shout out, thank you to RJ Moore underscore RJM over on Twitter for sharing this indictment. So what we can see right here, it says United States of America against Braden John Caroni, also known as John Caroni and Captain Hoddle t -Mun. It's interesting, they're putting these aliases. So with this one, it's been associated with this cord. Kyle Nagy, also known as Safe Moon Dev and Thomas Smith, also known as Papa defendants and this was filed October 31st 2023 so on Halloween the grand jury charges at all times relevant to the to this indictment unless otherwise indicated one <clears throat> one the defendants and relevant entities so the first part safe moon US LLC a limited liability company registered in Utah together with its subsidiaries and affiliates safe moon held itself out as a technology and blockchain company in operation from March 2021 through June 2023. SafeMoon issued a digital asset called SafeMoon Token, or SFM, which was first minted or generated in or about March of 2021. Two, the defendant Braden John Crony, also known as John Crony and Captain Hoddle Timon Crony or John Crony, worked for SafeMoon and at several uh, at various times held himself out as the quote chief executive officer of SafeMoon. Three, the defendant Kyle Nagy, also known as SafeMoon Dev, worked for SafeMoon and was the initial developer of SafeMoon. Four, the defendant Thomas Smith, also known as Papa, worked for SafeMoon and held himself out at various times as the quote chief technology officer of SafeMoon. Digital assets and background of SafeMoon. Number five, a digital asset or digital token refers to an asset that is issued and transferred using distributed ledger or blockchain technology. As such, the creation of a digital asset and transactions in the digital asset are verified and records maintained on a decentralized system using cryptography <clears throat> rather than through a centralized authority like a bank or government. Like traditional fiat currency, there are various types of digital assets such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Tether, and other digital assets, including other stable coins. Number six, a stable coin is a type of digital asset, the value of which is pegged or tied to that of another currency, commodity, or financial instrument. Stable coins are designed to reduce volatility relative to unpegged digital assets like Bitcoin. Number seven, Digital assets can be transacted on crypto exchanges, which are platforms hosted by companies or other entities that make it convenient for users to purchase, trade, and sell digital assets. Number eight, SafeMoon was a decentralized finance or DeFi digital asset launched in March of 2021 that subsequently reached a market capitalization of more than $9 billion. Since its launch, SafeMoon had more than 2 million SafeMoon holders. SafeMoon, like other digital assets, had its transactions recorded on a public ledger, commonly referred to as a blockchain, which acts as an accounting ledger. Unlike a bank's ledger, a blockchain is distributed across participants of the digital currency's entire network. No company, country, or third party is in control of it, and anyone can participate. Number nine, at the time of the of its initial minting, SafeMoon was available on the Binance Smart Chain, which was also referred to as the BNB chain. As a result, for every transaction involving SafeMoon minted on the Binance Smart Chain, the BNB chain recorded, among other things, the date and time of the transaction, the unique digital asset wallet addresses associated with the transaction, and the amount of the digital asset involved in the transaction. Number 10. Like other digital assets and tokens, SafeMoon relied in part on the operation of smart contracts, which in plain terms are computer code operating on a blockchain. Smart contracts are deterministic programs that execute a particular task when and if certain conditions are met. Number 11, 
In digital asset markets, liquidity refers to the ability of a user to convert a digital asset or token into fiat currency or another digital asset or token. If there is liquidity in the market for a, to a particular token, holders of that token can trade it without significantly affecting the token's market price. For illiquid tokens, trades of that token can cause large changes in its market price. Number 12. DeFi tokens relied on a type of smart contract known as a liquidity pool to supply liquidity to the market for a particular DeFi token. Each liquidity pool is a collection of paired digital tokens, for example, token A and token B. And these collections or pools in turn provide liquidity to traders who want to exchange or swap one of the tokens for the other, for example, exchanging token A for token B or vice versa. Token swaps completed via a liquidity pool are typically managed by a type of smart contract code known as an automated market maker and not by human operation. The price of the token is a pool in a pool is set automatically and is a function of the ratio of the two tokens in the pool. 13. For certain liquidity pools, the token pairs can be added to the pool by any user who wants to add liquidity. For each deposit of a token pair, the depositor receives unique, quote, liquidity pool tokens or LP tokens that act as a receipt. The holder of an LP token can redeem those LP tokens from the liquidity pool. Number 14, a user who holds all or even a large proportion of LP tokens can greatly affect the available liquidity in a market as the user could redeem their LP tokens and thereby remove the corresponding liquidity from the market. One way to mitigate the risk of liquidity removal is to use smart contracts that can render LP tokens inaccessible to any party in perpetuity or for a specific duration, i.e. as long as the LP tokens are locked, they cannot be used to remove anything from the liquidity pool and reduce the possibility of a quote rug pull. Number 15. A rug pull is a colloquial term used to describe a scheme in which an issuer of digital assets solicits funds from prospective digital asset investors, promising them certain benefits. And once the pur uh, purchaser's funds are used to purchase the digital asset, the developers abruptly abandon the project and fail to deliver the promised benefits while fraudulently retaining the purchaser's funds. Number 16. Like other DeFi tokens, SafeMoon relied on liquidity pools to provide liquidity to the SafeMoon market. SafeMoon and the defendants John Crony, Kyle Nagy, and Thomas Smith controlled the SafeMoon liquidity pools, in part through their control of the underlying SafeMoon smart contracts. Those SafeMoon smart contracts governed, among other things, how token pair deposits, token pair withdrawals, and token trades in the SafeMoon liquidity pool operated. Before I continue further with this, I'm noticing my pacing going through these pages and just how many pages there actually are in all of this. So I am going to be doing several parts just so that this is a little bit more digestible for you guys. I will go ahead and continue through the next four pages, but then I will be breaking this up into other parts. So do keep an eye out for those videos as well. So continuing on in this, number 17, as described further below, SafeMoon and the defendants John Crony, Kyle Nagy, and Thomas Smith, together with others, created and or operated a series of websites and published, quote, white papers describing SafeMoon's token supply, the property of Sa uh, the properties of SafeMoon tokens and its utility to investors. A digital asset white paper is understood within the digital asset community to be a comprehensive document outlining the technical and economic aspects of a specific digital asset, as is as in the case of SafeMoon. White papers are typically authored and or published by the digital assets development team or its core members and serve as a guide for investors and potential investors. Number 18, investors who purchased SafeMoon thus relied on the representations and efforts of SafeMoon and the defendants, John Crony, Kyle Nagy, and Thomas Smith to provide liquidity to the market for SafeMoon by controlling the underlying SafeMoon smart contracts that in turn controlled the SafeMoon liquidity pools. Number 19, SafeMoon, via the defendants John Crony, Kyle Nagy, and Thomas Smith, marketed to investors that, through the operation of SafeMoon smart contracts, transactions in SafeMoon would automatically be subject to a 10% tax, 
meaning, for example, that if a holder of SafeMoon transferred 10 SafeMoon to another user, one SafeMoon would automatically be retained from the transfer's attacks, and the remaining nine SafeMoon would be received by the other party. The proceeds of SafeMoon's 10% tax were split into two 5% tranches, the proceeds of which were supposed to benefit holders of SafeMoon in specific ways. Number 20. The first 5% tranche of the tax pro uh, proceeds would be reflected back to and distributed among all SafeMoon holders in proportion to their current SafeMoon holdings. In effect, through this reflection, a holder of SafeMoon would see their SafeMoon balance automatically increase each time any user transferred SafeMoon. The remaining 5% tranche of SafeMoon tax proceeds would be deposited into designated SafeMoon liquidity pools. The larger the SafeMoon liquidity pool, the greater the liquidity in the market for SafeMoon. Through the execution of SafeMoon smart contracts, half of the SafeMoon tax proceeds, 5%, were automatically used to increase the supply of SafeMoon and BNB in the SafeMoon liquidity pools by converting proceeds from the 5% tax into pairs of SafeMoon and BNB that were then deposited into the SafeMoon liquidity pools. Number 21. Investors in SafeMoon thus relied on SafeMoon and the defendants John Caroni, Kyle Nagy, and Thomas Smith to ensure that the 10% tax on SafeMoon transactions they had advertised to the marketplace would be in fact be assessed and collected for their benefit. 22. The most commonly used SafeMoon liquidity pools were collections of SafeMoon and another more widely known digital asset, BNB. Using the SafeMoon liquidity pools, a trader could swap SafeMoon for BNB, or vice versa, in a decentralized manner, i.e. without the use of an intermediary like a broker or custodian. 23. SafeMoon was also marketed to investors as a deflationary token, meaning that its circulating supply, or float, would decrease over time as the developers manually burned or destroyed SafeMoon on the blockchain, thereby removing them from the available supply of SafeMoon. As a result, investors in SafeMoon looked to and relied on the efforts of SafeMoon and the defendants John Crony, Kyle Nagy, and Thomas Smith to decrease the float of SafeMoon over time, which would, by definition, increase the value of SafeMoon for those investors' benefit. So the criminal scheme, this is part three, the overview. From at least in or about March 2021 through April 2023, the defendants John Crony, Kyle Nagy, and Thomas Smith, together with others, perpetrated a series of fraudulent schemes to defraud current and prospective SafeMoon investors by making materially false statements and promises concerning SafeMoon and omitting material information from their statements that rendered them false and misleading. Among other things, Caroni, Nagy, and Smith represented to investors that SafeMoon relied on, quote, locked liquidity pools that would automatically increase in size due to the 10% tax on every SafeMoon transaction. That the locked SafeMoon liquidity pool prevented Caroni, Nagy, Smith, and other investors at SafeMoon from being able to rug pull SafeMoon investors by removing tokens from the SafeMoon liquidity pool, that tokens in the liquidity pool would not be used to enrich the SafeMoon developers, including Caroni, Nagy, and Smith, that Caroni, Nagy, and Smith would manually add token pairs to the SafeMoon liquidity pool when transactions of the SafeMoon occurred on specific centralized exchanges and that the developers were not holding and trading SafeMoon for their personal, be personal benefit. These re uh, representations were materially false. Contrary to their representations to SafeMoon investors, from the inception, the defendants John Crony, Kyle Nagy, and Thomas Smith retained access to the SafeMoon liquidity pools, and they used that access to intentionally divert millions of dollars worth of tokens from the SafeMoon liquidity pool for their personal benefit, including to, among other things, purchase luxury vehicles and real estate and to find personal and to fund personal investments. In addition, although they publicly denied that they personally held or traded SafeMoon, Caroni, Nagy, and Smith repeatedly bought and sold SafeMoon for their personal benefit, including at the height of SafeMoon's market price, which generated millions of dollars in profit. The initial minting, marketing, and sale of SafeMoon to investors and the first fraudulent removal, uh, removals of liquidity from SafeMoon's liquidity pool. On or about March 1st, 2021, the defendant Kyle Nagy minted one quadrillion SafeMoon tokens on the Binance Smart Chain. 
As part of the minting process, Nagy received these SafeMoon into a wallet publicly referred to as the SafeMoon Protocol Deployer, the SafeMoon Deployer Wallet, which Nagy owned and controlled. After minting SafeMoon, Nagy used a digital asset offering service to make 777 trillion SafeMoon tokens available for sale to investors beginning on or about March 2nd in 2021. On or about March 2nd in 2021, the defendant Kyle Nagy caused the initial SafeMoon liquidity pool to be funded with 63 trillion SafeMoon and 61.74 Binance Coin or BNB, which is another digital token native to the Binance blockchain. With this addition of liquidity, an initial set of approximately 1,972 SafeMoon LP tokens were automatically generated and thereafter sent to a separate smart contract. Contemporaneous with the minting of SafeMoon, a series of websites and white papers owned and controlled by the defendant Kyle Nagy began marketing SafeMoon to investors and prospective investors, including to prospective SafeMoon investors in the Eastern District of New York. Among other things, these websites and white papers marketed SafeMoon as a safe investment because among in its other features, SafeMoon relied on locked liquidity pools, which allowed investors to transact in SafeMoon more easily, reduce SafeMoon's price volatility, and protected SafeMoon investors from fraudulent rug pulls by SafeMoon developers. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there, guys. The video is getting long and we got more pages to go through. So that's the end of part one. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe. And also you can join my Telegram group in order to stay up to date with the latest news of what's going on with this project, as well as other projects out there. And I thank you guys very much. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. Double shout out. Thank you to WeLoveSafeMoon.com, Victor Vegas, SafeMoon Oz for being higher level patrons. Thank you to my YouTube members as well. God bless. We'll see you in the next episode.